Hey guys. All right, so we got a whole new job that we're about to start on here. We're gonna use the k and mill and we're gonna take the vertical head off and we're gonna use the horizontal setup with an arbor and the outboard support. And we're gonna take that sprocket right there and we're gonna split it in half. So I've got a line that's already scribed on there so that I can line that up on the uh, exact center line and split it. So that's a job that I'm actually doing at work. This, this is a job for my work. And I volunteered to uh, do this on my K&T here at the house uh, because I wanted to uh, utilize the mill, you know, and use a uh, horizontal setup. I haven't got to show it yet for a job. So this will be the first job that I use uh, the, the mill for with the horizontal, okay? So it'll be pretty cool. It should be pretty simple. Clamp it down to the table. And I'm going to have to get it lined up and get it indicated nice and straight and line the cutter up and then we'll make a pass across there and cut it, split it in half. Uh, not, not a whole lot involved with it. So I've actually got a lot of people that's been asking me, you know, over a period of a couple months now about showing the installation and removal of the vertical head right here. So since I got to take it off, I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and show you at least taking it off there okay and then whenever we get the next job where i want to use a vertical head we'll do another video showing you how to install it because it, it is a little bit involved a uh, little cumbersome heavy got to get it lined up hopefully whenever we get to the project where we make the arm up here to hold it it'll keep it nice and straight and line it up really easy uh, we got to use the chain hoist and my gantry crane to get it off there so we'll start with that. We'll go ahead and get it off there and then we'll start setting up the sprocket and I'll show you along the way, okay? Okay, this part, I only have to do it because this uh, crank handle here is in the way of my gantry crane whenever I roll it down here. So I have no possible way to move it all the way out here and go past the uh, overarm supports on the back side of the mill right there. The, uh, the gantry just won't pass so all it is is a roll pin so i'm using one of my roll pin punches i got a set of proto roll pin punches here and i just knock the pin out just like that okay and then whenever i get through setting up the mill We'll stick it back on there and knock the pin right back in. All right, this is the little tricky part right here. Getting it around those overarms. All right, that works right there. We'll just leave it, leave it like that and bring them this way. step is we got to loosen these three nuts on each side and then these bars here these clamp bars there's one on each side once you loosen this they'll slide back and it'll allow it to uh, go uh, move away from the uh, the ways here like the box ways uh, let's see. I think that was inch and a quarter let me see inch and an eighth I'm sorry yeah that's inch and a quarter And a 16. All right, there's one side. Slide it back and we'll get the other side. Okay. 
Okay, we should be loose. It, what it's doing now, it's it's resting on the two overarms up here. It goes up in, I think maybe about a half inch or three quarters of an inch. It goes up in there and registers on those overarms. And then the clamps, of course, pull it up taut against the uh, the mill. So, But I still got another trick. If it don't come off this way, it's a really close fit on those overarms. There it is. Okay, I'll get it around here and we'll swing it so you can see. All right. So there's the two registers for the uh, for the two overarms right there, and then you also engage it here. This is so this is your horizontal spindle, and it will engage right here. Okay. Ooh, there's a grease fitting right there that I missed that I forgot was back there. So uh, this would be a good time to go ahead and shoot a little bit of grease up in there with our fresh SCH 32 that Dave gave us. I don't know how much grease it needs and I don't want to over grease it, so I just put 10 pumps. All right, and then what I'll do is go ahead and um, we'll just roll it this way and I'm going to set it next to the mill, all right? I got this block of UHMW that I'm going to use right up underneath the spindle, the nose of the spindle, so that it's not sitting on the concrete. how you take the vertical head off. Putting it on there is a little bit more challenging, but about the same thing, just reversed. So move this down out of the way and uh, we'll extend these out and get the horizontal set up, okay? You gotta miss the handle right here. Okay, we're gonna go handheld for just a couple minutes here. And I thought I would show you. Okay, this hole here, this is where the arm goes that is gonna hold that vertical head. So it goes down into that hole there. Got a set screw uh, that retains it. There's probably supposed to be a groove machined in it. I don't really know why you would need a set screw. Uh, possibly, Possibly for anti-rotation once you get it moved around. So that might be what the set screw's for. All right, so that'll be our future project right there. Uh, I don't know what this is yet. I haven't figured that out. It looks like another like freeze plug 
I'm not really sure. I don't know if it was a window and somebody painted over it. I really don't know. So, all right, we're gonna loosen up these clamps here. Got this big wrench and we'll loosen that one and loosen that one, okay? And I usually just leave this wrench right up here. I think that's loose enough right there. And we'll come around to this handle. All right. It's just like a rack and pinion. The rack you got some teeth milled in it. All right, so we'll just and feed this sucker out like so and you can adjust it where you need that's just where I've been every time I move them I wipe them down and I re-oil them and you can see the uh, that's just the WD-40 and whatever crud was on there so I'll get over here and wipe this up alright so let's go ahead and mount up our arbor support which is right there I kind of jumped ahead of myself a little bit. The uh, there, here's your arbor support. This actually doesn't need to go on yet, and the reason why is because I need to I need to find what cutter I'm going to use. I don't know if I'm going to use an inch and a quarter or a one inch arbor. I'd rather use my inch and a quarter if I can find the right uh, slitting saw that I need. So once I find the cutter, then I'll go ahead and stick the arbor in here and snug it up with the draw bar. And then go ahead and stick the uh, the arbor support on out here, okay? So I'll I'll be back whenever I find the cutter. I've been getting the arbor set up. I spent a little bit of time with that. Sometimes it takes a little while to get this done, so I want to try to get a little head start on it and show you what we got going on. Uh, there's a couple things that's, that's happening right here whenever you set up. Uh, first of all, you know, every job is a little unique in its own way. So you got to make sure that you got your proper clearance. So with this cutter here, I know that I can be able to clamp this down and cut through the whole thing and still clear on the bottom of these arbor supports. All right. Um, I'm going to use this. I want to use this configuration because I had to move the saw out here so that I had enough room for the sprocket to clear the spindle back there. All right, I don't know if you can see that. You know, so we got to clear it to the back. I want to use the mill slot so that I can clamp evenly on both sides here. And then I'm going to use this other style arbor support here. But I think this is style A. This slides on out here and we'll ride right here on the arbor, okay? But we run into a problem, and I think we're gonna have to do some troubleshooting. I want you to, I want you to watch the arbor here. Now this is not tight. See the nuts loose right here? I'm just gonna finger tight it. I want you to watch that. Okay? It appears that it's running nice and straight. And even without this arbor support on here, that that arbor will run nice and straight. Okay? Now, this is the problem that I started running into. I don't have a lot of room right here. I'm just gonna snug that a little bit. Now watch it. Now it's running out. If I can get some pull on it, let's see. Put a little bit more. It gets worse. All right, so what we got to do, I'm trying to find out why it's doing that. And so far, my suspicion is that some of these spacers in here are not are not completely faced off true. They're not parallel. So I'm gonna take these off and I do need to clean them. See, some of the ones that I've been using here, I've, I have only used this one time. They need to be cleaned off, but say like that one, 
that does not look good right there that's a homemade one and I think some of these other ones don't look too good either so I'm going to slide all this off and I want to go to the granite table right here and I'm going to see if I can set up and do a little inspection on these arbor or these spacers and see if we can find out if any of them are not parallel I think what it's doing is whenever you're drawing the nut up tight maybe the faces aren't completely true so it's putting it in a kink trying to pull up flat on the faces all right so let me get them off and we'll come over here next door and see if we can do some inspection work this just so you guys can see we got all the spacers off there we'll turn it on and without sticking an indicator on there you can tell that it's running pretty damn straight i'm sure you'd get a a few thousands run out if you put an indicator on it but I consider that a straight arbor all right we're ready to do a little bit of inspection and I brought out my browning sharp let's see what number was that seven this is a 731 browning sharp it's an awesome tool I love this thing I rarely get to use it I actually bought that uh, with the intentions of it being a camera mount a while back it's been a few years now I got this at uh when I was in Moultrie Georgia when they have the uh, swap meet every year I, I got this and then that big tap one of them big tap wrenches from the same guy and I believe this come out of a Ford plant there's a federal indicator and you probably can't see it on video but it's very faint there's a Ford logo on the on that indicator there and it's not perfect it, it it's worn but it might work for what we're going to be doing here. I just want to see if these spacers or any of these spacers are, are not parallel. So basically like, you know, like that. Already, uh, what I'm doing is I'm going over to the uh, lapping plate. I, I, I got a big lapping plate over there behind the mill. I'll probably show you guys that real quick too. And I'm just taking them and, and just... Uh, cleaning the faces with the sandpaper on the lapping plate to make sure that all the the crud is off of it now that is a tenth indicator and like I just said it's not perfect it's got a little wear I can move it back and forth and you can usually you can see a little bit of deviation there but what we want to do is just see how much difference we're getting Yeah, so, so far I'm getting a couple tents, two or three tents. There's a zero point. Okay, see, it moves around a little bit. I would think that this spacer here, the first one, is pretty straight though. I think that one's pretty straight so it may not be this one but I need to do some more I got a bunch of them up here so uh, I need to get them all clean and go over there and lap them on the faces I'll give you a quick clip of that so you can see the lapping plate and then we'll come over here and we'll check them all right so this is our our lapping plate uh, this is where you can use some lapping compound which I got some put up somewhere and you can come over here and you can lap parts and it's a big heavy plate <laughs> I usually just do like this though I'll just put a little bit of sandpaper up here and you can see where I've already done it all right and I'm just taking just take it and lightly rub it clean the face off there Okay, so that looks good. So we'll do that. I'll do that with all of them here. I was going to point out there's a couple that look kind of bad, like this thin one here looks pretty bad. But it's got a lot of like grease and oil dried up and stuck to the face. Then that could be a problem with some of these. I haven't cleaned any of these since I got all of them. And we may be getting an, an 
cumulative error with all of the faces just being gummed up. So I don't know yet, all right? I'm gonna take all of them and go ahead and just dress the faces lightly like this. Make sure we get all that dried up stuff off there. All right, and then we'll go back to the table. Hey, I just wanted to point out real quick, I might have found the problem. I don't know yet because I just started with this, but you see that shiny spot right there? Well, that dips down right there tremendously. I can feel it with my finger. Yeah, I can rock it. Look at that. Okay. Well, hopefully that's going to be our smoking gun, but I don't know yet. I'm just making assumptions. There it is. It's coming out a little bit brighter now. Can you guys see that? Right in there. All right. Let's go check it out. All right, I got these three spacers here. These are all three inch long spacers. And the one in the middle looks like the bad one right here. So I just want to do some check. I've, I just got this uh, set right here and we're just going to check these real quick. Okay, doesn't look bad. I think that one's okay. Let's check this one. That's just a different height there. So we're, we're moving on up. Uh, two thousandths, a little over two thousandths. A little bit of deviation right there. Pretty uniform though. There's a bad spot right there. You can see that. That, uh, that keyway. So this one's actually not in real good shape but it might work so let's check this one this is our one that looks like it's going to be rough it's already too small let's see if i can bump this around a little Look at that. Okay, so we're at I think that might be the problem right there. it's going to make this side run out too so we got a problem right there with that one I think I can clean it up though put it on a uh, expanding mandrel and face the ends I don't know if they're hard I haven't even uh, checked them with a file yet so all right I think we've got our problem but I got a couple more that I want to go ahead and, and inspect these are the running bushings for the one inch arbor so i got all those cleaned up too and i'm going to go ahead and do a quick inspection of these real quick see if we find any errors in these but they look okay and we'll bring you back here shortly all right we got the stack up done and i'm getting much better results now everything is drawn up tight so as you can see now we're going to use this support and we got this support out here on the end of this arbor right here so that should make a nice rigid setup
not in a bind anymore. Running nice and straight. Okay, so uh, I think that's gonna be a good setup right there. I gotta make sure I got some low clamps on here to clear the arbor. So that'll be the next step is getting, getting the clamps set up and then I wanna get the, uh, the groove lined up, okay?